Guys, hope you're well. This lesson, we're going to talk about the commutative property of addition and multiplication. Now, I know that this part of the work is really boring. I, I mean, I used to find this part really boring. Um, when I teach it, I think it's really boring, but I'm going to try and make it as exciting as possible. Um, and we'll try to do it as quickly as possible as well, so that we can just move on to the more exciting and proper kind of maths. Okay, so commute. I want you to look at the word commute. And I want you to, maybe some of you know what the word commute means, but commute means to move, to move, okay? So then, so that's going to be quite an important thing. Whenever I hear, whenever you hear the word commute, I want you to think of move, okay? So in this lesson, we'll look at the commutative property for addition, and we'll also look at it for multiplication, okay? So for addition, let's quickly do this. So if we go A plus, I'm first going to use letters. And then I'm going to use numbers. A plus B plus C. And then we're going to go, uh, for example, B plus A plus C. So what I want you to notice is that the A was position number one, the B was position number two, and the C was position number three. Now if we look on this side over here, we can see that the A is now in position two and the B is in position one. It doesn't really matter that this one hasn't changed. But can you see that these two have moved? Can you see um, they've moved from where they were? And that is what the commutative property does. It's all about one of the numbers or both of the numbers or all of the numbers have moved. For example, it could also go A plus B plus C equals to C plus A plus B. As long as one of them has moved from the original then it's called the commutative property. So what does it really mean? If we say five plus two plus one, well, you could quickly calculate that for me. What does that give you? Well, that gives you eight, right? So could we add it up in a different way or could we say two plus five plus one? Have a look at that. We've moved the two and the five around. Can you see? We've moved them. But if you do that, do you still get the same answer? Yes. And so what we are now saying is that when you are busy with addition, you know, when you're adding numbers together, if you use, if you move one of them or two of them or all three of them, the answer will remain the same because of this amazing thing called the commutative property of addition. Here's another example. If you say three plus two plus six, will that be the same as six plus two plus three? Well, yes, according to the commutative property, but let's just see if it actually does work. So what is three plus two? That's five. What is five plus six? 11. What is six plus two? That's eight. What is eight plus three? 11. So when you are adding numbers together and you move them around, it doesn't matter. The answer will still be the same because of the commutative property of addition. Okay, so that's what I want you to know for addition. Now we're gonna quickly look at multiplication. So with multiplication, it works exactly the same way. If you say three times two times four, um, let's quickly work that out. What is three multiplied by two? Well, that is six. What is six multiplied by four? 24. Now, do we get the same answer if we switch things around a little bit? Can you see how I've moved things around? Here we had a two in position two, a three in position one, and the four was in position three. Now you can see it's totally different over here, but let's see if it works. Does it give us the same answer? Well, what is two times four? Eight. What is eight times three? 24. So what we can say then is that when you are multiplying numbers together, and by the way, on the next slide, I'm going to show you that it, it does not work with subtraction and division. And so I should have actually started with the overall rule, which is A multiplied by B multiplied by C is gonna be the same as B multiplied by A multiplied by C. Or you could even use um, C multiplied by B multiplied by A. It doesn't matter as long as you move one of them. Maybe you wanna do like that. It doesn't really matter. As long as you are moving them, it'll still give you the same answer. And, we, and because we are moving them, we call it the commutative property, because commute means to move. 
Now, this is called the commutative property of multiplication, whereas on the previous slide, we looked at the commutative property of addition. So it's a mathematical thing, and it means that whether you're doing multiplication or addition, if you move the numbers around, the answer will still be the same. Okay, now, does it work with subtraction? Well, let's have a look. Let's say we had 7 minus 3. Now, is that the same as 3 minus 7? Well, 7 minus 3 is 4. 3 minus 7 is minus 4. Can we see that the numbers are not the same? So we can therefore say, does not work with subtraction. What about division? Well, let's say 10 divided by 2. What is 10 divided by 2? That's 5. What is 2 divided by 10? Now, some students say 5, but it's actually not correct. If you do it on your calculator, you would actually end up getting like a fraction, maybe 1 over 5, or your calculator might say 0 comma 2, which is definitely not the same as this. So, therefore, does not work with division. And so that's it for this lesson, guys. We've learned about the commutative property of multiplication and addition. And in a test, they're going to ask you, is this commutative or is this associative or distributive, which we're going to look at in future lessons. And you need to be able to know which one is commutative. And what did I tell you in the very beginning of this lesson? Commutative is all about when it moves, because that's what the word commute means. When your parents go to work, they commute to work.